It's r slash entitled parents time. Being a teacher is tough when you have to teach some entitled kids. It's not just the annoying behavior of the kids you have to worry about, it's their entitled parents as well. Some parents just won't accept that their precious angel might not be as perfect as they thought. Get ready to duck, the wrath of these entitled parents is dangerous in this episode of Voicey Hears Entitled Parents. This story was called, EM tried to steal a game that I was buying. So my girlfriend and I are thrift store hunters and flea market hunters. Every weekend we go to flea markets and thrift stores to find deals and stuff. So on this day we are at a thrift store and I'm looking at the music CDs. I typically look for old electronics, movies and video games. I look in the music CDs because you can find old video games mixed in with CDs due to jewel cases. I see a young boy less than 10 years old looking at the CDs, pulling them out, looking at them and dropping them on the floor. A few CDs start to pop out of their cases. He has one CD in his hands, a computer game with a picture of a cat on it. I don't remember the game. At this point the kid is walking away from the CDs leaving it a mess. I get down and start putting them away. One of the items I find in the mess is a cardboard paper case with a CD in it. It is for the Dreamcast and it is the web browser 3.0. For people who don't know, the Sega Dreamcast was Sega's last video game system. It had a 56k modem attached to it so you could go online. This system came out in 1999 and was one of the first game systems that went online. Near the end of the system's life it also got an upgrade to a broadband adapter which are extremely rare and can easily go for $100. Sega also released a web browser for the system. This was 3.0, the last web browser released, and the only one that supports the broadband adapter. These are super hard to find as there weren't many produced. They aren't worth much because not many people would want this, but they are still hard to find. Even eBay rarely sells them. I say to myself, a rare game, and I'm using the term game loosely, as it is mainly just to browse the web in 2001 format. I must have said it out loud because the kid heard me and said, that's my game, you stole it from me. I look around and find out that he was addressing me. I'm sorry, but you dropped this after pulling it out along with the others here. Well, I was going to buy them all and you took the game from me. Sorry, but you put them on the floor and walked away, not even cleaning them up. The kid ran away and I thought that was the last of him. I put away the rest of the CDs. I hate how employees would have to clean this up. Plus, I wanted to look at them anyway in case I found something else. When a woman, the typical Karen type, comes up to me with the kid. You shouldn't steal games from my kid. What? I'm sorry, but I picked up this CD when your kid put it back. My kid told me you took this out of his hand and said that you stole that rare game from him. At this point, the kid is lying, so I tell her the truth about the CD. I'm sorry, but I took the game after your son dropped it on the floor. The CD isn't really a game. It's a web browser from the 2000s for an old game system. Don't accuse my son of making a mess. He would never do that. He puts everything back where they belong. You can't take his game that is worth thousands of dollars. I think to myself, this is not going to end well, and the item is only worth $50 at best. Well, whatever you say, I don't care. I start to walk away from her as I didn't want to deal with it anymore, and leave when she starts to pull on my arm. I'm not done with you yet. At this point, she has crossed the line. She looks to be average size, but I am tall and big. I pushed her away from me and hit her in the chest by mistake, trying to get away from her. This causes her to be pushed back and fall into the clothes behind us. This knocks the clothing rack down and hit at least four other racks. Everyone in the store turns to us and she starts yelling, He assaulted me! I turn to my left and see a store employee next to me. Ma'am, you need to leave now before I call security. No, he assaulted me. I want him arrested. Ma'am, I saw the whole thing and have cameras to prove it. Leave before anything else happens. I want to speak to your manager. I am the manager. Now leave. She was still fighting with the employee, who I found out just now was the manager. Another store employee called security during this time. Security took them out. The manager told me that she and her son were infamous around the store and now had reasons to ban her from the property and the other thrift store chain. In the end, I still got my game after paying for it. Now if she really thought the game was worth thousands of dollars, I wonder if this almost would have been an opportunity for malicious compliance. The response could have been, oh, you would like this game so much? No problem. I'll sell it to you for $300. And you know, if it's worth thousands of dollars, then that's a bargain. So either they'd have to admit that it's not worth as much as they claimed, or you're getting a great deal out of it, and a little bit of punishment for the entitled parent. This story was called, My Mother-in-Law at a Restaurant. A while ago, I went to a little food court with my boyfriend, his parents, and his sisters. 
Our dietary restrictions were as follows. One person who loves meat, father-in-law, or FIL. One person who is lactose and peanut intolerant, my boyfriend or BF. Three vegans, one of whom, sister-in-law one, is lactose and sugar intolerant. Yep, that exists. Mother-in-law or MIL, sister-in-law one and two, and one person who is just a picky eater, me. This food court had four restaurants. A seafood place, not vegan. A pizza place, not lactose free. There's usually milk in the pizza. A regular restaurant with a real menu. And a snack bar. During this whole story, the chef of the regular restaurant was preparing food nearby talking to us. Boyfriend doesn't like fries, and there were no vegan sides for SIL 1 and 2. So we quickly ruled out the snack bar. Seafood restaurant had no vegan options, so ruled that out as well. The pizza place gave my boyfriend an SIL1 a very bad tummy ache last time, so that was ruled out. This leaves the real restaurant, which wasn't more expensive than the others. We walked over there and asked for the allergen info so we could see what the vegan options were. In the Netherlands, restaurants are required to have a sheet with all their dishes that they contain, so it's easy to check without bothering the staff too much. SIL1 noticed that a delicious vegan dish was served with a non-vegan sauce. So she asked the chef who came to offer help if he could serve it without the sauce. He said it was no problem and asked if we had any other questions. SIL2 asked him if we could make one of the dishes without a certain vegetable. And again, no problem. My boyfriend asked him what kind of ice cream they used for dessert. Some types of sorbet are often lactose free. And it was regular ice cream, but the chef offered to make a dessert that wasn't on the menu. An assortment of fruit. Everyone was delighted at this option. Then came my mother-in-law. She is usually very nice and smart, but not today. I don't see anything on the menu that I like. But you like tomato soup, right? Yes, but I already ate that last week. I want something different. There are salads on the menu, and even a vegan burger. No, I really feel like eating french fries today. The rest of us asked the chef if we could order french fries from the kids menu. It wasn't on the regular one. And again, no problem, he was happy to help. Why would we go here to eat french fries? We should just go to the snack bar. Because you're the only one who wants to eat there. And you can order fries here too. I just don't get it. Why do you all want to eat here? They have nothing. They have plenty. Even me found something she likes. Well, I'm putting my foot down. I want to eat at the snack bar. Okay, so you go get food from there and we'll order here. We'll meet again at that table over there. Fine, we'll go to the restaurant. But I still don't understand why we can't just... Stop, just stop. Do you really want to force two of your kids to have horrible stomach cramps all evening just so you can eat fries from a specific place? You're just overreacting. It wasn't that bad. Yes, it was. We made jokes about boyfriend looking pregnant all evening, remember? His stomach bloats like crazy when he ingests dairy. After that, we finally sat down to order, but mother-in-law still wasn't done complaining. MIL to the chef. Can you make dish one with the meat from dish two? Oh, and substitute the side with those from dish three and make the sauce without cream. Mom, just eat it without sauce. Or choose a different one. They can't just mix three dishes. Well, dish one is vegan. It has fake meat. Dish two uses real meat. And the vegetables from dish three are cooked in broth for extra flavor. So those aren't vegan either. The best I can do is leave off the sauce and see if we have leftover vegetables from dish four and add those for you. We should have just gone to the snack bar. If you want fries, you can just order those from the kids menu. You look young enough. Wink. After that comment, mother-in-law lightened up a bit, and we could finally move on and order our food. Nobody had a stomach ache, everyone enjoyed the food, and we still make jokes about mother-in-law desperately wanting to eat at the snack bar, when she's usually the one to choose the most expensive restaurants you can find. I think that really shows what a good chef entails. Not just somebody who can make food that's really good and enjoyable, but understands that the eating experience is to do with people. And part of enjoying the food you're eating is the environment you're eating it in. So it was pretty clever of him to flatter the mother-in-law so that everyone could have a nice evening enjoying their food. This story was called Entitled Parent Upset When I Wouldn't Pass Their Child When They Failed the Test. So this happened almost 10 years ago now, but it still irritates me when the topic of parents comes up. So in high school, my friends and I worked as swim instructors for some extra cash during the summers for a swim school. There were five levels. I taught level three and my friends taught level four and five. Level three was where the students would really learn to swim. They were taught the front crawl, backstroke, breaststroke, side stroke, and how to dive. Level two taught the foundations to these strokes. 
even though the advertisements for the swim school listed what was to be taught in each level, and where the student swimming needed to be prior to entering that level, parents would just put their child in level 3 because it was in the middle, and their kid somewhat knew how to swim, so level 3 just makes sense. So this one mum enrolls her twin boys who are about 6 in level 3. The first night is just an evaluation night, so I have the students push off the wall and show me how far they can swim and what they know. Most students would go about a quarter of a lane. It wouldn't be pretty, but they would get there. The twins barely made it a few feet after pushing off the wall. The next part of the evaluation required the students to float on their backs for about 20 to 30 seconds. Neither of the twins could float. So at the end of the lesson, I pull the mum aside and suggest she transfers the twins to level 2, as they are not where they are supposed to be to continue in level 3. She tells me they passed level 2 the previous summer and wouldn't send them back. I expressed my concerns about the remainder of the course, and she refused to send her twins to level 2. My manager told me to let it go, and just have one of the first year instructors around the twins at all times. So the course continues and the twins continue to struggle. They can't front crawl, side stroke, breast stroke, back stroke, or really dive. The latter half of the course is all in the deep end, and the twins couldn't do anything without a flotation device. It is the final test. To pass, the students have to jump in the 10 foot section and go underwater, then backstroke to me about halfway through the lane. Tread water for 30 seconds, float for 30 seconds, then front crawl back to the start. They must then do a sitting, a kneeling, and standing dive. Roughly half the class usually passes. The test is really difficult, because level 4 and 5 are extremely difficult. Level 4 and 5 are for students who want to do competitive swimming. Twin 1 jumps in, goes under, comes up, front crawls for about 2 or 3 feet, and then grabs the swimming lane line. He floats for about 10 or 15 seconds, and then grabs the lane line. He tries to tread water, and then grabs the lane line. He uses the lane line to get back to the edge. He does a sitting dive, but not a kneeling or a standing dive. Twin 2 jumps in, goes under, comes up, grabs the lane. He doesn't try to swim to me. I ask him if he wants to try treading water and floating. He says no. I ask him if he wants to try to dive, and he does a sitting dive. But like his brother, he doesn't do a kneeling or standing dive. At the end of the lesson, I give each student an envelope with their results in it. Needless to say, the twins didn't pass. I told the students if they or their parents wanted to talk about the results, I would be around for a little bit after to talk. Entitled mum comes up and is yelling at me for failing her sons, saying how I should have passed them and I was biased against them due to my evaluation on the first night. I am confused because she watched her sons try the test and neither one was anywhere close to passing. I call my friend who teaches level 4 over and have him explain the first week of level 4. They have to swim an entire lane front crawl and backstroke. They start to learn butterfly and have to float for a minute. The mum still doesn't see how her sons won't be able to pass level 4. Eventually, my manager walks over and the mum starts to yell at her. She claims we are terrible instructors because the level 2 instructor failed her sons twice, and I just failed her sons in level 3. Mind you, she told me on the first night that her sons passed level 2 the previous summer. I'll take the blame on that one for not checking the records to see if they did. She is going on about how she paid for the lessons and her sons should be passing and they are not. The manager starts to explain how lessons do not mean their child is guaranteed to pass. The mum eventually storms off and says she will never use our school again. The next summer, my friends and I go back to work as instructors, and the twins were not enrolled. I honestly feel bad for the kids because the lessons must have been torture to them because they couldn't do anything. The first year instructor and I tried to be encouraging to them, but there is only so much you can say besides, it will get easier as you get older. After that year, my manager started to put age recommendations on the advertisements. Level 1, ages 4 to 5, level 2, 5 to 9, level 3, 10 and up, level 4 and 5, ages 13 and up. Some kids just can't run, and some kids just can't swim. It's not their fault necessarily, maybe part of it's not putting in an effort, but usually it's just they're not inclined to do so. You do have to feel bad for the kids whose parents just try and push them to do something that they just don't want to do. You think the mum would have got a clue after her kids failed level 2 twice, like why would you think that they'd be able to do level 3? Was she trying to get them to level 4 and 5 for competitive swimming? Like if they just can't swim, 
it's not worth the effort pushing them, and they're only going to resent you for it. This story was called, EP Tries to Force Me Out of the Window Seat. So basically, I was recently flying to Kathmandu, and there are tons of mountains and things, so it's a real nice look out the window. I am only 14 years old, and was flying alone to visit some family. In the cast is me, entitled parent, careless kid, looks to be six, flight attendant, and nice man. And the story begins. I was getting my stuff set for the seven hour plane ride that is about to ensue. And when I take a seat, another woman, EP, sits down next to me and puts her kid on the aisle seat. I said hello and did the basic, I'm a nice kid stuff. So where are your parents? Are they here or not? Nope, they didn't fly with me. I'm just visiting my grandparents for a week. Oh, okay. Five minutes pass. Hi, we should switch seats. And you can sit in the middle. She starts to get her bag. No thank you, I prefer the window seat. I don't think you should be sitting there because you're too young. I'm sorry but I'll stay here and I'm not moving. My son wants to sit there so just move already. She fake smiles. You obviously want my seat, not your son. What a brat! Kids these days are so rude. You shouldn't even be flying alone. Hmm, alright ma'am. I'll be ignoring you for the rest of the flight now. What? You can't do that because I said so! The flight attendant walks over. Is everything alright ma'am? Yes, my son isn't moving from the window seat and he is being very rude. Um, no. Ma'am, let's get two things straight. First, I am not your son, and secondly, she is trying to get me to move. Oh, be quiet, Dave. Stop playing around. She literally gave me a fake name. My name isn't Dave. Hands flight attendant my boarding pass so she can confirm. Would you like to move your seat? Yes, please. I guess you can have your seat now, ma'am. I accidentally spill water on the seat as I get up to leave. The flight attendant tries not to laugh. He can stay here and I'll move. Nope, I already got up and left. Good day. Oh, and sorry for spilling water on the seat. I know you really wanted it. I thought it was over, but oh my gosh, no. My son is going to get sick now. What are you even saying? You lost it. I'm trying to have a nice flight and not hear your voice. The kid is nice, but you seem to have a problem. You're a grown woman and your son hasn't even said a word. He has just been playing around with the seat. How about you accept the fact that you can't sit down and enjoy a flight? Thank you. Flight attendant ushers me to the front. In the end, I got upgraded to business class. It was so nice, I felt like a king up there. Not to mention the food was really good. I don't know what happened to the lady. She just gave me glares at the airport, but I'm like, whatever. Nobody wants to be stuck in the middle seat. You can understand why the entitled parent would want to get out of it, but for most people, there are these social conventions like, you don't just ask someone to move seat because you want it which prevents most people from actually doing that. But then again, entitled parents aren't most people. If you'd like your story to be narrated by me, don't forget to visit the subreddit r slash voicey here, link below. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe if you'd like to see more. All right, I'll see you in the next one.